I grew up on a farm um, out in East Hull with, with you know my parents. So I'm, I've always been around animals, probably not the size and the scale of the ones that are stood behind me right now. Uh, but yeah, I've always loved animals, but I'm still very intimidated with the, the group of six rhinos right behind me. Obviously, yeah, you're playing for Saints, you probably live around the area. Have you been to Nosley before? Yeah, I've been a few times. Obviously, they've been a sponsor of, of St Helens for a while now, and we've, the club's had some great links with them. We've done a lot of team building activities down here, and um, you know, it's even to the extent that they named one of the uh, the rhinos after Flano, Chris Flannery, one of our players. So. Um, yeah, we've had good links, but myself personally been a few times um, and coming down here to the Safari Park, it's always the monkey enclosure that seems to be you know, one of the most popular parts, but I've never been this close to the rhinos and you know, they're so impressive to be you know, such, so close to them. <laughs> It's fantastic for Nosley Safari Park to have these three baby rhinos here at the moment uh, and for, for the white rhino in, in general it, it's great to have such a good breeding group of, uh, of the animals here. And, uh, how do you think an animal like this would compare with uh, a rugby player on the pitch? Uh, I'm not sure the uh, the rugby ball would last very long but uh, and the, these animals can run at about 30 miles an hour as well so uh, you know, they'd have to be pretty quick ball carriers to get away from them. The white rhino comes from Africa. Um, they, they became endangered because of the, the poaching and the hunting for the, the horns and, and bush meat. And, um, you know, so it, it's great that we've got breeding success here and that maybe in the future it can help with their reintroduction into places where they're missing at the moment. And it's still important to, to look after these animals. If you you know if you take your eye off the ball, then you know people are going to start taking the rhino horn again and, and start hunting them and stuff. So we still need to look after these animals. And how do you think John's getting on? Do you think he's got a potential as a as a as a keeper? Oh yeah, we, we'd take him on as a keeper. I'm sure he can handle a shovel. <laughs> You're doing this because you're playing Leeds on uh, on Friday. Who are going to be a bit of a wounded animal themselves after the defeat at Warrington. How are you going to counteract that? Yeah, look, I, I think Leeds are a great side. I think they've, they've been in, in, in relatively good form. I think maybe the, the coach was slightly critical after the Warrington game, and, and rightly so, because Leeds are a proud proud side and have high, high expectations of, of what they want to achieve. And um, you know, We're very wary of the fact that they've, they've probably been embarrassed in, in, in what was probably the last 20 minutes of the game for for 60 65 minutes Leeds Leeds were in massively in contention and have played fantastically well in the game so you know we've got a lot of respect for them and also very wary like you said that they, they are probably wounded the pride is probably dented from from uh, letting the score blow out to as big as it was you've been up against it yourselves but you've been in, in good form how good is it to get sort of Lomax and, uh, and Gaskell back it's great, yeah. Look, those two lads have been have been great for us this year, especially Johnny Lomax. You know, certainly he looks like he's got all the attributes what what you know any any world class rugby player needs, and and to have him in the side is a constant threat for us. And somebody who again proved after being out injured to come straight back into the side and produce a performance like he did against Celtic, it's it's credit to him at such a young age. Um, you know, the, that's that's what. Um, when you go through a patch of in injuries that, that maybe what we've had is that you find gems like them, those two guys and other people who've really put their hands up and for the future of the club it's it's fantastic, not only for the future of the club but the, for the future of England Rugby League and especially you know with the new momentum behind England Rugby League and, and the, you know the confidence of the, the ETS programme to bring into these international players that it's you know it's something that's exciting for, for, for the full competition. And how are you feeling about your own form at the moment? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with how, how I've been playing. It's, it's been difficult sometimes because when there are injuries, you know, it's a tendency that you do move around a bit when, you know, I suppose you've, you, you've got that reputation as, as being quite flexible and, and I've had to do that, but I've, I've been pleased with my own form and, and I've enjoyed playing in a team full of probably younger players and taking on a bit more responsibility. I suppose that's part of my mandate now as one of the senior players. So um, I'm sure that as time goes on, that will only become more important for me to be like that. You've passed halfway through the season now. You're, you're well placed in, in both competitions. What what are your expectations now? Are you starting to look at, at, at perhaps silverware? No, I mean, look, we, I think 
we're, we're in the running in both competitions. I think where we'd like to be as a team is, is you know, as is, is close to the top as possible come the end of the season in terms of Super League. And in the Challenge Cup, you know, we've just got to take each game as it comes. That's the beauty of the Challenge Cup. I certainly think there's been some talk of fiddling with the format. I couldn't disagree more with that. I think that the, the Challenge Cup throws up those those ties where you want to see mismatches. And for me to try and sort of tamper with results to make it appear to be even would, would be wrong. Um, but with the Challenge Cup, we've just got to focus on the next game coming. That's Hull KR and make sure that we're ready to play that game. Um, but we're, we're in a, an ambitious club, a successful club and, and a club that's full of tradition and a, a club associated with success so you know certainly this current crop of players has no you know ambition of changing that. Mm -hmm.